got it. Base 8, 9, 10, seal. Scaffold decks A, B, C, secure. All systems green. What a beautiful sight. This is Fleet Command. Reporting Mothership pre-launch status. Command online. Resourcing online. Construction online. Cryogenic subsections A through J online. K through S online. Scaffold control, stand by for alignment. Alignment confirmed. Stand by, release control. Stand by for command line testing. Command line green, initial fleet in position. Now let's try a little total relaxation. While you're calm, focus on your feet. Tighten your muscles in your toes and feet, and now relax them. Let the excessive energy flow out through your feet into the floor. Tense your legs and relax them. Let those muscles release that energy. Now tense your buttocks and abdomen, then release. Tense your chest and release. Your shoulders and now release them. Now tense your arms and hands and fingers and release the excessive energy. Tense your neck and your face and relax. Feel your body. Listen to your breathing. Your psychic abilities are already there. We're just getting relaxed and ready. Let's try focusing. I want you to visualize your spirit around you and inside you as if it's a nice sun or a cloud or a rainbow or a color or a light. And imagine yourself being completely filled inside your body with your spirit. Your spirit is a working part of you. It's already inside of you, but I want you to be aware of it. It's through your spirit that you use your psychic abilities. These simple preliminary exercises help you stay calm and balanced with anything you encounter and help keep you open to experience even more of your talents. But don't worry, we'll be practicing them together with every exercise so that they will become second nature to you very quickly. 6.30 Sunday, Carter and Reagan campaign chiefs on News Conference. The magic of today's soft rock hits. Images from KTEL. Should have never let you go. Take a little rhythm. Only a lonely heart sees. Gee whiz. The soft reflections of today's music. Images in tune with the 80s from KTEL. It's in stores now. And now from Budweiser, the taste buds. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Brain. Hey, guys, the munchies are coming. <laughs> Uh, Next, uh, I want this Spanish peanut. Oh. <laughs> There's only one thing bad about.
about the munchies. Yeah, the dreaded dry mouth. Oh, but don't you love the cure? Budweiser. Budweiser asks, why do you think they call them taste buds anyway? Hey, everybody. Guess what's up? They up the fresh and freshen up. They up the fresh. Up, up the fresh, up, up the fresh. How'd they up it? With new flavor waves for more refreshing flavor through the gum. More up. Liquid center, too. More refreshing flavor. They up the fresh and freshen up. They up the fresh. Up, up the fresh, up, up the fresh. New freshen up with flavor waves. They up the fresh. Outward Bound, Rota, Spain. The Navy. See your local recruiter or call toll-free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. They called it the island of pelicans, the first Spaniards who saw it when they came here in the 18th century. That was all that was there. Pelicans, seagulls, and rock. Almost no soil and certainly no water. The Indians of the surrounding Bay Area thought the place was damned. Perhaps they were more right than any of the white men who would try to make use of the ugly outcropping in San Francisco Bay during the next two centuries. Alcatraz started with Indians and seagulls. All right, guys. And who knows? I think it's... I think it's time to get back in it. I am uh, super early today because I got some stuff going on this afternoon, but I wanted to get a stream in, so here we go. Um, yeah, it might actually be a little touch and go over the next couple days. Got some stuff going on, which is a bummer because I just didn't stream for an entire week because GDQ was going on. Oh yeah, so also this is uh, this is Luminous. It's a um, when did it even stream the last time? I don't know, man. It was over a week ago, so it's been a while. Maybe a week and a half? But, uh, yeah, this is Luminous. This is a music rhythm game. Music puzzle game. Rhythm puzzle game. Whatever. So, as you might imagine, it's kind of my shit. Um... I'm gonna play this mode, which is, like... The way this game works, it'll make sense later. It's kind of like Tetris. You play through stages and at a certain demarcations it graduates you to the next stage. Um, this mode rotates you through all of them in the game in order. Uh, if you're really good, you can play through them all. Uh, and like lap, basically. Rotate around. I'm gonna try to do that. It takes a long time. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that. Hopefully I have time before we leave to do the next thing. Um, should I buy Puyo Tetris on Switch? Spy, uh, if you want Tetris or Puyo, yes. I, I mean, it, it's there's nothing to that game that isn't in either of those games already. So, uh, the the reason you'd buy it is because it is Tetris. Yo, dog, it's Tetris, and that's enough for me, to be frank. One of those rare perfect games. Speaking of, uh, oh yeah, that's the other thing that's kind of cool about this. The guy who made it, Tetsuya Mizuguchi, is also making an, a Tetris game. Which is something I'm very excited about. Because I like this game a lot. I used to play it... a whole lot. For a while it was kind of the only thing on PSP that was worth playing. I guess it was this and Wipeout in the early days, which was enough for me. How good was that Final Fantasy VI speedrun? I I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot of it. The They have a tendency to, uh, to end marathons with long JRPGs. I guess I get it from a programming perspective. It gives you time to sort of wrap everything up, load out. There's a lot of runs that I didn't see that I want to go back and watch, which, you know, is pretty typical of a GDQ, actually. Every time they have one, I'll spend the next, uh... 
next grip of, grip of weeks just watching all the segments that I missed. And I fully expect to do that this time. Yeah, it was a it was a great Oh, oh whew. It was a great uh, great event. They're getting better and better. And goddamn that overlay is some sexy shit. I really hope the Okay, so now yeah, it's, it's moving to the next song basically. They're called skins. It's essentially the uh, the sound bank that you play or you hear whenever you're dropping notes and shit. Incidentally, um, this is one of those games where it's going to be a little difficult for me to interact with chat very much, especially once it gets harder. I'm very smart. Yeah, I used to do a whole lot of playing this game and thinking, just getting my, getting my thunk on. Having some deep ass thoughts. And it's weird to play this again because all of those start to kind of come back. Hmm. Hold on. Did you each have to complete the whole game or is it cut off point you had to play in each game? Huh? What? What are you referring to? Hmm. Huh. Do you mean our GDQ stream? We just played until they were done. Um, oh yeah, Murtaugh. <laughs> so yeah, we didn't necessarily donate $20,000. People donated $20,000 to us and we passed it on. Um, which is, is wonderful that we basically get to take credit for everyone else's generosity in that situation, but... Yeah, I don't know that we can necessarily claim that. God damn it. I accidentally hit that button. Okay, good. Yeah, trying to recover in this game is interesting. It can be pretty difficult, because, like, no matter what, every time you move, every time you move, you're adding four squares to the board. Which means you basically have to... Sometimes, if you stack it up right, you can remove more than four squares per turn, but it's pretty... Pretty likely that you won't a majority of the time. So then you gotta like wait for one of those clear pieces to show up. And then it just becomes a waiting game. This is some pretty high level high level luminous strats I'm dropping on you guys. It's not. Too slow. So that is one of the interesting things about this game that it seems like is all like there's a little bit of DNA and uh, and Tetris effect, the aspect that you have to not necessarily play in time with the music, but you have to be aware of the beat and time your actions accordingly. Because if you drop pieces in the middle of the sweep sweep bar, it'll clear a few of them, not all of them, and that's pretty bad when it comes to trying to keep the board clean. God damn it, D-pad on the. Pro controller can be a little touchy sometimes. And then some of the skins later get vi pretty visually cluttered and distracting on purpose. So part of the game is trying to concentrate while a bunch of fucking lasers are going off in your face. You guys worked for that 24k? Yeah, we did, but... I mean, to me, that's the stuff I... I would, would and did straight up do for fun. I really like GDQ. I like uh, I like playing video games with friends, and that combines the best. Like that combines all of those things. So I don't. And in as much as my job is super fun on a normal basis, that I especially do not consider to be work. Stuff like extra life. Like that's always that's always just just straight up fun. And it's just a coincidence that I have get to excuse it as being for charity or for a good cause or whatever. Hail 
Roman, thank you for the Prime sub. I also thought, like, as a viewing experience, chat got a little sterile after they made it sub only um, at the last GDQ, but I don't know, people are catching on with, like, Prime sub and stuff. I think chat got, they got two pretty good levels of, of meme territory while also not being a racist, transphobic cesspool. You can see people trying to bait out the mods, too. Everyone thinks they're so fucking clever. I got banned, and all I did was say that. No, dude, you didn't. You said more, I was there. Saw it happen. You're just being a cock. Trying to start shit, because you're bored. You got shit to do. Anyway. It's good shit. Yeah, I see some of that baiting stuff happening in, um, in our YouTube chat, too. It was pretty bad during, uh, you during E3, and I was like, well, I guess that's just how YouTube's gonna be. I mean, I've, I've seen people comment about the, the horribleness of it during E3, and the, the better quality of it during Drunky, or sorry, during GDQ. I honestly think a big factor is just size of audience. There were... This isn't a, uh, this isn't a claim about the quality of content or the entertainment value, but there were more people watching during E3 because, well, it was E3. And I'm a pretty firm believer that once, once a crowd of humans gets to a certain size, there's just a certain asshole ratio you can't escape. Once there's enough people in a room, some of them are gonna be cocks. They're just gonna be giant assholes. And, uh... It's nice to believe that you could have, you know, a thousand people in a given chat and it'll all be civil and wonderful, but... I have yet to see it happen. There's rare circumstances. I guess they do happen, but they're very rare. Where someone can get an entire group of... a large group of humans to be s civil for a, a fucking second. Some comedy legend is gonna get it in their mind that, oh, I could... I could troll everyone. You know what? Yeah, you're the first person who ever thought of that. Congratulations. What if you did the opposite of what people asked you to do? Wouldn't that be funny? Sir, this world has yet to encounter a free thinker to parallel your intellect. Let us chronicle your wisdom for future generations. Let's not forget this day when you so bravely did the other thing. We could all learn from you. We talked it over. We decided to do something a little nice for you. Because we said no racism and you immediately said the most racist thing you could think of. We put your dick... We, we pulled some strings and got a little parade for you. I know, I know. You didn't do it for that. You didn't do it for the recognition. But we decided, you know, what kind of people would we be if we didn't celebrate heroes? The world needs them, you know? Yeah, Rick and Morty, like, not like pseudo-anarchic punk bullshit, I'm so used to that crap, man. Every, every pseudo-intellectual hacker back in the day, tear it all down, man, tear it all down. It's all bullshit, we're all gonna die. These corporations want your money. I'm different, though. I, I, I fucking hate it, I listen to Black Flag and play a lot of Quake, so I'm smart. This shit's nothing new, really. Dudes that think they're just... What? Can't hear over the, the thumping beats. People love their trolling. Yeah. People love feeling smart. People love feeling exceptional. It's hard to blame them, really. It's a nice thing, but... It's like you can either try to get it the right way, which is hard to do. It involves being a good person and like working really hard and being humble and all that shit. Or you can just troll and like clap yourself on the back. You're like there, I did it. I found I found the secret. I am I am the smart one. Now. Sure. Sure man. I guess this is like Stages of stages of wisdom to that used to bother me. Now I'm just like, ah, oh, that's another one. 
I used to want to like beat it out of him. Not physically, of course, but like I'll just get in the get in the internet trenches and be like, man, fuck you. I, I know your game. I try and try and talk him out of it. No, it's just like, ah, fuck it, whatever. There's too many of you. Too many of you, and this is like something that's too core to the human experience. I'm not gonna verbally own that out of out of people's DNA. That was a nice thought, though. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you gotta shake off the ring rust. Sometimes on Twitter, some dude will be shooting his mouth off. I'm just like, you know what? All right, I could I could use a stretch. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this fucking stupid crap. Because you think this is the first time that I've ever encountered someone like you. So yeah, this is Luminous though. A lot of cool sounds and bleepy bloops. Whoops! Get it, but I am confused. That's okay. It's not really. It's not worth getting, really. It's not. Not like I'm making a profound statement about anything. Just skate fast, eat ass. I'm doing great. Playing some puzzles. Clearing blocks. You know they aren't gonna clear themselves. Second. I know a guy who was too edgy for you once, and I remember when the cast of the female Ghostbusters was announced, and he was like, ugh, just a bunch of girls who haven't seen the original material. That's how it always is, right? Just the instant gatekeeping. Oh, I was asking for an explanation of how the game you're playing works. Got you. Okay. Mm. So, um, there's a sweeper that moves across the field. It does it in 4-4, basically. Every measure, it, it crosses. And, um, that is what clears blocks. Uh, but it only clears them when they, like, activate or whatever, and they, they, like, flip whenever you make a 4x4. Except once there's a 4x4, if there's two that connect to it and they're the same color, those will also flip. So you have to start with a 4x4 square of, com of the same color. Then that, like, starts an activation chain, and then from there you can either have two blocks that are on one of the four sides of it, or you can have three around the corners. Du -du -du -du. And that's it. So you have to build those color p patterns off of each other using these 4x4 four four squares of four colored blocks each. Um, and they come in they come in patterns of like all one color, three of one, one of the other, two of each. It's basically Bejeweled Tetris. Yes, except that the only difference is, unlike Tetris and unlike Bejeweled, the blocks clear in time with the music, with the beat sweeper. So that does matter. If you... So let's say you make a 4x4 four four of a color when the, the beat sweeper is in the middle of that block. It'll activate, but only clear half of it. And then that leaves you with two of one color and a bunch of other colors mixed in. So the game on a strategic level is about basically being efficient, um, not leaving a lot of orphaned colors sitting around. Um, if you match improperly, you can end up with like a checkerboard pattern. You can see it start to form at, at some points on the bottom. And that makes it very hard to clear. Because there's really, like I was saying before, there's no efficient way. Every every time you place a block, you put four squares onto the board, and it gets harder and harder as the game goes on to clear four every time, four or more. So you end up with like net cubes in your well, whatever. Um, way overly really complicated, but still fun. It makes sense once you play it a little bit. It makes sense once you play it a little bit. Uh, Mint joint. I was not able to play Tetris Effect, which bummed me out. Um, I didn't. Yeah, I if if I had thought about it earlier, I didn't think it was at the show. And then I saw someone tweeting about it, and I was like, fuck, it's here! But at that point, I had already basically, like, I had two hours left of E3, and I already had appointments booked up, so. Literally just sideways two-color Tetris without shape complications. Sideways two-color Tetris without shape complications. Sorta? Sorta. There's a little more to it than that, but sorta, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are there are also like gameplay quirks in that um, whenever you move around, every, everything is quantized to the beat. So 
every... It can get a little hectic when you play fast, but... And then also, like, the blocks drop in time with the music, so faster songs just make, make the game harder. And then it's, I guess, the game truly is, on a, if you're playing for score, it's about clearing as many pieces back to back because you get that multiplier on if the beat sweeper crosses. With at least, I think with at least four blocks cleared, it maintains your combo. But that means you have to be clearing something every single time the sweeper passes. Which is, is that's kind of where the risk reward aspect comes in. If you play too fast and you end up making some bad drops, then you end up with a lot of garbage on your board that prevents you from cleanly making matches on the next few passes, so. Fuck! Stuff like that. I was trying to get, trying to get cute. Fuck! Oh, shoot. And then the really slow ones are, like, this is when the game starts to play with its own mechanics, like it's... Like, yeah, that that fast one was pretty hard, right? What if we gave you a really, really fucking slow one? Because then it, like, takes forever for blocks to clear. It gives you plenty of time to rack up score, but... Also leaves a lot of garbage on the board for a long time. Shit. See, look, it only, only clears half. And those fell down in a place where I can't clear them now, so... There we go. And then, yeah, when it comes to slow songs, the other the other little strategic hook is that you have to think at least one move ahead. Because the beat marker moves so slowly that if you, if you stretch combos across the screen, they don't clear until they're all cleared. Which means you have to start stacking up on blocks that are, like, hollow but haven't been actually erased from the board yet. Which can be... Difficult to work with. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's starting to it's starting to end up with a lot of a lot of blocks just scattered around. Can't quite clear them all. Damn it! That was bad. Alright. Not bad, not bad. Oh. Okay. I 
Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED talk on, on Luminous. Just leave your tips by the door. Has anyone ever asked for tips at a TED talk yet? If not, that means I could be the first one. Oh god, this one's fast. Oh, maybe not. Never mind. Okay. Shit. Ugh. It's been seven months since I started working at a game programmer in a big studio. Do you have any tips for me as a former programmer? I mean, not really. Um, seven months, huh? Hmm. Try and find people that you um, you like. I, I guess the thing that I the thing that I didn't expect or took for granted is that I thought when I got a job working as a programmer that everyone that I worked with would, like, I'd get along with them. Um, I'm like, well, if they're getting into programming, surely they like, they have to like computers, and if they like computers, they probably like anime and video games, and, and like, they'll be a little nerdy, but I am too, so we'll, we'll like, we'll figure it out. Instead, uh, my coworkers were like, normies. Um, which is to say, like, my even calling them that also implied that I, ha I still had a lot of, like, growing and socializing to do. Um, so, there's probably a lot of things as a, as a healthy adult I probably could have done to make myself happier too, but I also wasn't equipped in that way. But, um, yeah, I guess, put effort into your social circles, uh, but that's just good, that's like life advice, that's not even programmer advice. I still liked, uh, programming. There was a point where, like, I was on a, a pretty technical team, like, doing system, system level tools and system level coding. And I don't think I was... I was probably, like, combination quite not as productive in that role as they were expecting me to be or hoping I would be. And then also a, uh... Like a more... An, uh, an opening on the tools department popped up, or sorry, on the customization team. So basically, the company I worked for had an, in, an internal set of dev tools. And I started off making the tools. So it was like C++ coding, system level stuff, digging into Windows APIs and all that. It was fun, it was rewarding. Probably wasn't as, it was kind of a blind side to be honest. I was like fresh college graduate and they were throwing me at like this code base. Uh, it was like, tens of thousands of lines of code and then it was just like hey okay write like write these wrapper functions for this other thing you've never heard of like i had to basically write one of the pro projects i sold down on a lot when i started was i had to write a, a com wrapper for an entire api and like at the time com apis were already like deprecated so there wasn't a lot of good um, documentation about it. There was no one I could talk to about it, for sure. So it was like, it was it was for a bank that had like some outdated shit, and they wanted our our stuff to work with their outdated shit. And they were paying for it, so it was like, hey, add this to the tool set so that they can maintain their stuff. I'm like, okay. So yeah, it was a, it was a tough uh, first project. Um, there was some other stuff that I did pretty well, I think. But anyway. Um, so I think com combining, like, probably been a little slow on the uptake with that, plus, uh, then needing people on the client customization side, they moved me into, like, more of a managed tools team, where instead of writing code, I was just using the internal dev tools to customize software. And 
when I started working, I was around some pretty classic nerds, like Star Wars references, just kind of nice dudes. And I don't mean that in the, like, capital N nice guy kind of way. I mean, like, they were just nice dudes who, like, one of them really liked hot sauce. Another would tell stories about the old days where people would be, like, trading in and out punch cards while smoking pipes. And I'm like, all right, these are, like, these are my, these are kind of my people. Which, you know, fittingly, these two dudes were, like, 50 and 60 years old. But we got along, you know, they were nice. I, I was kind of shy. It worked out. But then, yeah, I transferred... Suddenly I was with, like, fresh graduates, like, 20, 21, 22 year old dudes who got into computer programming because it paid, paid well, and that's the only reason they were there. They didn't give a shit about, like, anything technical, really. They liked wearing nice clothes and driving good cars, and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> I'm not like you at all. I got this job so I could work with computers, because I like computers. So I didn't mesh very well in that group. I didn't do myself any favors by being a jankity-ass nerdy either, to be absolutely fair, but it didn't work out. So I just ended up working, being on a team with people that at best didn't get along with, at worst had like active animosity towards. A lot of the people I worked with were pretty patient with me is how I would put it, but some were not. And again. That dude was a self-described asshole, so I... am not taking that one entirely personally. Have you ever met a person who, like, is an asshole and knows it and is proud of it? Like, somehow in life just never... Was never told to feel bad about it? About treating people like shit all the time? One of the first times I guess I'd ever run into somebody like that, too, so I didn't really know how to handle it. Basically, yeah, the the real life equivalent of that guy who's like, guys, don't be racist, and he's like, what if I just said the name of the country Niger? What if I just did that for no reason and then complain about it when I get timed out or pe or like banned? Say that you're infringing on my free speech or whatever. Uh huh. You are that guy. You. You know what? And sometimes with that guy, I mistakenly before kind of attributed it to wanting to be exceptional or... Sometimes I don't think it's even that. I don't even know what it is. I know that this this can come off as like sanctimonious naivety, but... Sometimes I've just been mystified by people that just like breaking things. And there's a time and a place for breaking stuff, don't get me wrong, but like... People that either never learned ne or never cared. There's a thing they'll break it. The people who the the sandcastle people like knocking over sandcastles. And it's not that it's not that it's incidental that someone else made it. It's because someone else made it. Maybe it's a power thing. I don't know. I'm not. Not so egotistical to think, not yet anyway, but I can f divine some of life's biggest questions while playing a rhythm game. Shit, I really did not put those places, pieces where they should go. Oi, 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 oi. Yeah, this is when it starts to get a little bad, it looks like. I find that most people being assholes are being assholes to try to fit in. Some sort of weird misguided attempt at being cool or powerful or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. It's definitely power. We have the same people and I live in another continent. Yeah. I don't know, I tend to, th I tend to think that... Uh, power still is not the end goal though, right? Like, why, why power though? What, um... What human need is satisfied by that? Why strive for that? Um, I feel like it has to... I mean, ultimately, I think if you drive it all back, it goes to back to, like, fear of death <laughs> in some way. Hmm. Jealousy is the most common answer, I would think. Being sad or angry with themselves that they cannot achieve what they destroy. I mean, maybe. Uh, that's not, not universal enough. Um, 
I could try to say something clever here, but I'm not that clever, so it won't be funny. So instead I'll say something extremely rude or off-kilter to the current conversation or something, and hope that makes someone laugh. I guess I get that aspect of, like, not knowing what to do and experimenting. Testing boundaries. That makes sense to me. But, um, another piece of anecdotal evidence. This self-described asshole, I remember him... I, I think he was just... I can't recall if he was specifically talking about being an asshole this one time, or it's just an asshole thing. Ooh, like, it doesn't, this aspect at least was a power thing, so we we went to... It's been a, a terrible winter in Green Bay, which I wouldn't recommend. If you're not into football or drinking, there's not a whole lot to do there. And I, at the time, wasn't into either. But, um... So... He immediately, when... When we got a rental car, because we only got one, he grabbed the keys and was basically just like, Yeah, I'll, I'll keep the car. And I'm like, whatever, man. I didn't care to fight about it. I had already kind of gotten over everything at that point. Um... But there was one point where he was, like, driving back from a restaurant or something, we got dinner, and... We were, like, exiting the highway, and he just slammed on the brakes. So the guy behind would have to as well. That's it. Just brake check somebody for no reason. And then, like, laughed. Like, giggled. Ugh. Like, man, you really just are just a dick. I don't know that that's necessarily a power... I guess that is power? Sort of? You feel in control of somebody else? Fuck, man, this is... Not going well. Fuck. Okay. Fuck! Fuck! Ah. Fuck. Me! Keep rotating everything the wrong way. Ugh. This is bad. I might, I might lose. Fuck! <sighs> Jesus Christ, okay. Really slow level. Which could end up biting me in the ass, but maybe I can use it to clear out some stuff. And to be, to be frank, one of the reasons I'm talking about this is that these are the exact sorts of things I would think about when this game came out, because that's where I was and what I was doing. Remember when I, I said that I would just play this game and think a whole lot? Basically this. Shit! Whoa! Oh boy, I gotta... Fuck! Oh boy. I'm not... not doing myself any favors right now. play my cards right and I really hope this level keeps lasting Oh! 
There we go. So tense right now. Oh, uh. oh, oh, crap. Okay, I'm gonna play it real goddamn safe. Okay, I think that's good. That appears to have cleared out a lot. That that one like spire that was separating out the entire screen was murder for a bit there. I think we might might be in a place where we're finally chipping away at it. Oh. Wait a second. I knew a kid who was the, was the YouTube troll in real, but in real life, pretty much. Uh, and we were playing Hangman, and he went up there and made the word Jew, and then said, "Get it," because he's being hanged, and every kid in class wanted to leave that class immediately. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Hey, Lauren. Yeah, it has been a while. It's been a while since I've streamed. Uh, I'm doing good. Got to GDQ all week. Got to do some cool stuff. Got some good work out of the way. Good shit. But yeah, everybody, uh... Everybody has that phase where, like... Pushing boundaries is seen as innovative. Yeah, it's, uh, don't do this thing. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, I think it has to do with self-esteem issues. Nobody likes to feel like their position or actions are ignored or useless. Or in other words, hold someone down or give them the feeling of being held down long enough. And he's likely to start holding other people down to feel himself on top of someone instead of fighting against being held down. No matter people or his own mind who is holding him down. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, seeking to understand is well and good. It doesn't change the behavior, though. Empathy is great, but... I don't know. You can empathize with an asshole, but that's still, that doesn't make them not be an asshole. I guess you always want to believe that once you understand someone... Not that they'll necessarily change their behavior, but it'll make it easier for you to, like... Tolerate that behavior, maybe? Or figure out ways to deal with it constructively? I don't even know if constructively is the right, right word, but I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to chip away at this chunk over here. I think we gotta build up so you can like take it down from the top. Oh! Okay, well that fucked. That fucked me. Yeah! Okay. There we go. Yeah. As Millennial said, this is the furry level. So enjoy. Everyone knows that this is a uh, secret furry stream anyway.
guess it depends on the day. We have secret boar days and then secret furry days. What you drinking? Looks like brewer's yeast and water. Oof. Interesting guess. No, I'm not that hard up for beer. Uh, it's iced coffee with uh, coconut cream. Damn it, that was not a good place to put, put any of that. Yeah, if you're if you're really going for score, that's another thing of like knowing when a big clear is coming and trying to stack up your multiplier so that you have a big one for it. Hot strats. Again, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Well, this is the Reese's peanut butter cup level. I just remember... Yeah, playing this game and just feeling so fucking lonely. And at least I had the awareness to know it was loneliness. It was also kind of, it was a, a small amount of terror. Because I I had my job and like was had basically entered the adult working world. And really didn't like it. I was like, man, is this, this is it? It's this. Really? Working a job with people I don't like. For work that I feel decent decent at. Like, I'm pretty good at it. But I don't care about it. I'm really expected to spend the rest of my life like this. Playing, like, going to a job that I don't really care about. Staying awake in bed at night. Playing my PSP because it's the thing that I do enjoy. Just sneaking it in. Whenever I can. This is it. I'm gonna sit here and think about how my life is going by. Not a great time. A lot of like internal searching, I'm trying to figure figure a lot of shit out. I'm sure everyone's had that feeling once or twice where it's just like things are fine, but they're not right. Good enough. And you have to start thinking, man, is, is good enough it? That's that's what I can hope for. Just like cable TV. Hanging out with friends sometimes. That's what I gotta live for. Live for the times I get to hang out with the people that actually like are nice to me or understand me or tolerate me at least. I feel like there was a lot of tolerating me back then. I, I want to go and write thank you notes to all the people who were ever kind to me. And think like, man, I did not know how to appreciate that at the time, but in retrospect I can realize now that you were extremely kind in ways you didn't have to be. And it meant something. People ought to know. People ought to know when the, the nice things they do echo. Christ. 
Ugh. I'm gonna try to break this thing down. It's gonna be... That was a terrible idea. I don't know what I was thinking. Holy shit. That was the worst idea in the world. Oh boy. Fuck. Oh boy, this is not good. This is not good. Ugh. Shit. I wasted that. Christ. Oh. This is so scary. I have to basically build up next to the giant spire to be able to start matching away at it. Yeah. go. Oh, that was scary for a second. Okay. Get back in it. Shit. Oh, I feel like it got really hot in here all of a sudden. Time in a long time. Oh, I didn't see those. I'm gonna say for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm in the clear a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I I had my phase, you know, which is also why I try to be a little empathetic to all the little twerpy ass dudes running around the internet now. Like yeah. I was on something awful too, man. Like new grounds. This edgy internet shit ain't new. You just thought you found a way to troll harder by making it political. Now people are actually paying attention. Oh yeah, this this level. I remember this one being pretty intense. Yeah, like something awful back in the day. They they were making 9/11 jokes and shit. Herf derf. Like it was funny, but whatever. Damn it. 
do wonder if this whole fucking bullshit, if it'll ever get to the point where there will, like, people will get far enough away from it that there won't be people trying to control the narrative anymore. Like Gamergate and all that crap. People still try to rewrite what that was and how it started. Which is so weird, because it's like, no, I was there, man. I saw everything. Day by day, saw it all happen. Can't tell me it was about this or that. I know what you're doing. You're trying to manipulate history. I guess it's a power thing. Yet again. I kind of get it. I get feeling powerless. And, or feeling powerless, not necessarily being powerless. And that's where it gets weird. It's like, you're telling a bunch of people who fear, feel powerless that they, in fact, had power this whole time. They're like, I didn't feel that. And yeah, you didn't. Because you also have no empathy. But you have no empathy because you're ignorant. That's fine. But instead of, like, treating this as a learning moment, it's instead about you. It'll be interesting. 30 years from now, if, like, there can be a documentary about this phase of the internet. Oh, shit. Well, that was real dumb. Without people arguing about how much of it is true. still argue about JFK assassination and shit, so I guess a good conspiracy never really goes away. I do hope at some point it'll be it'll be looked back on as thoroughly absurd that some of this stuff happened, ever. What do you mean people just stopped getting vaccinations? They just stopped? Because some celebrity told them to? That's all it took? But it's like, it's proven to work. Medically proven. We don't... And people just decided that wasn't true? Yeah. They were just like, meh. This makes more sense to me. It makes more sense to me that there's a giant conspiracy. Whoops. One of those other weird, quirky human behaviors, and I, I feel like they're kind of connected. I think it's a power thing. If you, you feel, like, pushed around by the man, the way you exert power is choosing to believe that there's some giant conspiracy that you're suddenly on the inside track about. You don't have power over me because I didn't go to college. Like, insinuating that I'm stupid? I'm as smart as a doctor. Look, I read this thing on the internet. A model told me to not vaccinate my kids. Therefore, I feel smart because I now know the secret. Can't... can't fool me anymore. Is that your sheeple? I know it's... people have a right to basically believe... well... people... yeah, have a right to believe whatever they want. They do. But I do wonder at one point for the... for the betterment of the species, we'll have to have, like, for kids or whatever. Have little talks with them about, alright, you can believe whatever you want. I'm not trying to get in the way of that. Never would. But. You're still a human, and humans do a lot of weird stuff. So let's go over some of that weird stuff. Like, Let's talk about the ways in which your brain will try to mess with you. And will actively like work to make you make bad decisions sometimes. If you're aware of those things, you can still make the decisions you want. But maybe just be aware that your brain has this weird desire to believe in, like, conspiracies or... To see connections where there aren't any. But I guess that would also be seen as, like, brainwashing. No. Free, free thought. Free speech. No matter what. It doesn't matter if kids get the mumps. It doesn't matter if diseases that have been extinct for years come back. Free speech is the best. It doesn't matter that some people willingly abuse the shittier parts of human nature for a mouthpiece. All around, by the way. That's not a... I don't believe that's a one-sided thing, either. Whatever. Welcome to media. I don't know. 
I don't know why any of this is surprising. If you democratize media, all you get is human nature thrown back in your face, and it turns out it's not the best thing in the world. Hold up, I gotta turn on this fan. It's about giving the people a feeling of having secret knowledge and being invited to an exclusive group. It's about feeling superior to your peers and feeling special. Yeah. I think uh, I think I agree with that. A girl in my high school didn't believe in the moon. Okay. Okay. Because she watched a, do a documentary on YouTube. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I saw it in a tweet. So I don't remember... I was a pretty pro gamer getter because I did think it was about ethics and journalism. Number nine, so even that I thought was odd. I don't, I don't understand why ethics became the thing. Correct me if I'm wrong here, number nine. I got, I got the spirit of it. I think it was more about games media is no longer about what I care about. I think that's what that meant. Not ethics and journalism. Ethics is stupid. <laughs> ethics doesn't matter. I think what it meant is all of these games writers that I used to like like, I used to like reading these blogs. Now they're just talking about indie games, and they're just talking shit about AAA games that I like, and they're putting up all these goddamn op-eds about political issues. Whatever, man. I just wanted you to talk about games and have fun. Where did it go? Why did it change? And I think that's what came down to ethics. People conflated the two. Like, ethics means you write about fun games and just leave it at that. Um, that was my interpretation. Because there, there were a lot of layers of, like, what you're saying isn't what you're doing. <laughs> and your argument doesn't hold water because you're making the wrong argument. You're not really being honest about what you mean. And, and that's not in reference to, like, oh, this is whole cloaked sexism witch hunt thing, which it also was. But the ethics thing I, th I thought was valid, but not about ethics. I think it was more about people that were in games media and games culture being frustrated that the media outlets were no longer serving them content they wanted. That's fine. It doesn't mean you have to yell at women. Um, and also doesn't mean you have to call it ethics. I don't know. I do agree that, that that was also a minor problem of like people getting games and not disclosing them or something like that. But Does, like, does one line and the attribution of a YouTube video change everything? No. Because people still got mad about that even when it was happening. So... I don't know, I thought it, I thought it was a, uh, a weird smokescreen argument, which, which made it very difficult to talk about. Because I don't think anyone really knew what they were mad about. And that's kind of why, yeah, somebody, somebody in chat said you can ask 100 people what it was about and get 100 different answers. You can, because it was about 100 different things. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter what it was about. It harnessed a bunch of very angry, angry little dudes. It was also kind of a an interesting study in, in crafting narrative. It's not happened a million times. We're like, as much as as much as one side would accuse the other of doing it, anytime they had the chance to sort of like. Be a first responder, like because pe people do love charging on in on someone who's like, "What was that about?" They can't wait to tell you the version that can the, like matches their side. So it was also sort of a interesting happening of people both knowingly and unknowingly manipulating origin stories to make themselves seem more empathetic. It's like a co communal delusion almost, of, like storytelling and. Myth writing, heroes and villains and lies and deceit and some of the shit that did happen, a lot that didn't, but it, at, at one point it just got, had a life of its own, really, and everyone used it as a as a as both a uh, divine reason to to attack the things they didn't like in games media and also like on both sides too. If, if you can summarize it as neatly as two sides, but I think one side used it as legitimately as we hate women. <laughs> or women are ruining this thing that we like, so we gotta, we gotta chase them out of town. 
And then the other side used it as proof. Okay. You guys are just sexist assholes. And you validated it. All of my condescending blog articles about you. So yeah, it was this weird standoff. Where like, each side dug in. If you want to say there were sides. That said, one side was way, way shittier about it. Like... Without question. Death threats and shit, come on. Or video games. Also only to women. Exclusively to women. That was the one thing that, that never, like... I went through the- I saw the, like, flowchart enough times to know how it goes down, but... Like, it's, it's not about sexism. Okay, then why are women the only ones getting harassed? I didn't harass anyone! That's always how it goes. I didn't do that! So why would you conflate yourself with a movement where that is clearly happening? That's not my fault. I didn't do that. Why should I- why should I be responsible for that? Alright. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I get it. I get it. So yeah. Oh, shit, man. This is not going well. I'm getting, getting concerned. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Oh, man. Yeah, this is getting... Fuck. Fuck! Oh, this is bad. Shit! Oh, I might, I might lose this. Maybe. Oh, 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 oh! Fuck. Guys, I'm so scared right now. Okay. Oh. Oh, thank god, okay. Fuck. Oh! Oh, this is not good. Shit. Oh, I guess... Come on. I wasn't recalling events accurately. Shit, man, this is bad. This is really bad. I don't know if I can make this. Oh, there's another blue one. Just gotta survive for that. Oh no! I went the wrong way. Shit. <sighs> Do you also condemn movements like Black Lives Matter and Occupy Wall Street for a few shitty people who did really bad things too? Yeah, this is the rhetorical, rhetorical roundabout, isn't it? The problem is, Black Lives Matter and Occupy actually had positions. Gamergate was about nothing. Because, like I said, ethics in games journalism isn't a thing. It's not a problem. It never was. I don't like the current direction of games journalism makes more sense. But, oh, that joke, thank you. I want to thank you and everyone else for helping me in difficult moments in my life with depression. Thank you all very much. Wish everyone the best. Regards from Italy. Hey, regards. But, it's... It's easier to overlook the actions of a negative few that take it too far when the mass also has a point. Um, but they, they don't. They don't with... Gamergate was not... Not a real thing. Um, like what... 
All the action was taken against women. Um, women writers and women programmers. There was an amount of boy, like, writing sponsors of particular blogs to boycott, but that action was taken as a result of perceived attacks against them, not ethics violations of any kind. Um, very few of those actually occurred. Um, or were, or were found out or acted upon. So, ethics and games journalism is checking whether or not someone put hashtag ad in their tweet. Yeah, you're right, Otter. If that's what the, if that's what the campaign amounted to, then great. Except there were entire, entire threads where people were organizing harassment of women. And only women. Um... So I don't know, man. Maybe that's my perception bias. Maybe all- ah, uh, 96%? Are you serious? Okay, well I almost got there. I guess that was the last skin. Ah, uh, what you gonna do? Are we level 100? I don't even know. I guess 96 is what I got to. Whatever. Um. Hmm. Oh yeah, fucking. Let's play Splatoon for a little bit. I uh, can't play for too much longer, but. But yeah. I get that, but wouldn't that be subjective? Whether or not it's important. Also, I don't buy the whole we hate women. And they are only ones who got shit on the internet. People suck, especially hiding behind a keyboard. I would say, yeah, women totally get more of it, but it's not exclusive. Right, I'm not, I'm not saying it was. Furthermore, it doesn't have to be for it to be a valid point. Um, and also, you know what? Anything can be subjective. Therefore, you can't say anything about anything. Hitler did nothing wrong. That's just my subjective viewpoint. You can't hide behind that either. At some point, you have to make a qualified decision to live in this world. And that was also a lot of a lot of Gamergate stuff. It was like, we are going to turn morality into mathematics, and it just so happens the mathematics always work out in my favor. I know that too. I know that shit. I was that guy too one, at one point. So at some point, you have to, like, look at the texture of something. Oh yeah, who won? Pulp. I'm guessing. No, no, no one likes Paul. All right. At some point, you have to empathize, and you have to appreciate shades of gray. But then the the counter is like, no, people are abusing shades of gray to make themselves the victim, and then they just play it up, and then they get a lot of money on their Patreon. Except, except like shitty bearded dudes make way more money off of being fucking assholes on the internet than people who play the victim card. So dumb. I mean, yeah, Feminist Frequency has a Patreon. Welcome to the free market. But, like, talking head libertarian shitwads make way more money. I'm a shitty bearded dude and I don't make money being an asshole on the internet if it makes you feel any better. It does! This, again, this is a few, a few actors, like, harnessing a particular aspect of human nature and turning it into money. Um, most people are, are decent. Have you played Octopath Traveler? A little bit. I don't know if that demo is still playable. I started it, I, there was a lot of reading, and then I just fell asleep. <laughs> this was late, late at night. Um, you ever read The Last Question by Isaac Asimov? It's a really great short story about humanity and, and his journey through history. I think you'd like it. Yeah, is that, is that the one? Ooh. Is that the one that opens with, like, scientists turning off the last generator on Earth? Oops, what did I just hit? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I like that one. I got sucked in and it was bad. I'm a very liberal guy, but it got me really not liking feminism because of that. Because they were painting third wave feminism as victims and all that. I didn't become radicalized, but I'd gone a little deeper. It would have become more conservative, I think. Yeah, it's, um... It works. It works. And... I mean, it, it's... It's just like religion. <laughs> you You practice the recruiting drive enough and you get pretty good at it. And you learn how to create a very empathetic, believable story. Doesn't make it not true. Doesn't make it not work for people. It's just, you just see the patterns after a while. Oh, 
Oh, he just keeps he just keeps rap rapping. All right. So yeah, this is Octo Traveler. Wait, no, what's it called? Octo Expansion. Anyways, it's pretty great. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, Iso Iso Padre. Oh my god. He's dropping some fucking harsh knowledge. You tell him. Splatoon is one of the greatest games. Oh yeah. CQ Cumber. <laughs> fucking Splatoon is the best. It opens to two drunken dudes asking a computer a really hard question for a bet. Well, right. That, yeah, no, that, but they're like, they're celebrating because they just turned off the last power generator on Earth, right? And yeah, it skip, skips forward through time, and every time, like, they ask the computer a new question, or the same question. No, I, I yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I, that's the one. I say think. I'm trying to remember how to, oh, right, just like this. So this is the uh, single-player expansion for Splatoon 2, which is really fucking cool. Come with that stump a while ago, now I have to try and convince my friends that today's feminism is not all SGWs and that they are people with legitimate gripes. I mean, you don't have to convince anyone of anything. That's the other thing, man. You don't, you don't have to be militarized about your opinion. Um, you can just believe what you believe. Let other people believe what they believe. You can, you can believe that certain things are, are hurtful or... I should go down the green line. Why not? Um, wait, C, A. I'll do it in order. B, yeah. Popping fresh station. Sure. Yeah, I've seen people go too far. Definitely too far. Both ways. Oh, this fucking gun. Oh, you gotta shoot balloons while while gr grinding, huh? There's definitely people who can't, you know, can't wait to be the, the fucking diversity police. For sure. Yeah. Isn't there a way to... There's not a way to turn around, is there? I already, I already lost. Ah. Uh, hold on. I don't like either side of SGWs or anti-SGWs. I mean, yeah. I think that it's it's fine to like ah ah okay it's fine to have opinions I think I think where it st starts to become trouble is when you start saying like this is how people should live or what they should believe god damn it Been a while since I played Splatoon. I'll get back into it. What? <sighs> Shit. <sighs> Is this DLC hard? Yes. It's supposed to be. I don't know that I've necessarily gotten to where it gets really difficult, but candles, you're you're white knighting right now. Yeah, internet's internet's fun. a lot of people that either accidentally or intentionally forgot that there's still people. There's still a lot of people. Shit. Ooh, boy. That was close. No, 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 no. Uh. Oh, commenting on what you were saying earlier about White Knights. Yeah. Sarcasm can't come to check. No, it's it's fine. No, it seems sarcastic enough. I just, I mean, that's another internet thing, right? Of instantly labeling and discounting what anyone says. Like you just have you have a ranking for everything. Fuck! No! God damn! And I think that's part of trying to. It's you're you're turning human relationships into mathematics. There can't be anything like nuanced or subtle to what you're doing right now. You are white knighting because you want to have sex. And that is the limit of like human motivation my tiny shitty white male brain can understand. Yes, I feel comfortable stereotyping. I should be allowed to, right? I am one. Whoa! I've been one for a while. Shit! No! 
Oh boy. Oh shit. All right. Have I tried aiming? Hmm. Didn't think about the aiming. Should try aiming. Yes, that's a good idea, joke. That is the thing that I, w I was just like slapping my dick against the controller and wondering why I was losing. Thank you. The top top tip. I should do a TED talk. Steph, I'll be I'll be done in a minute. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know if you wanted it over there or not. What? I didn't know if you wanted it over there or not. Nah, that's cool. Okay. Breakfast is ready. I'm gonna beat this level and then probably stop streaming. Using motion controls, yeah. Pro controller with, with motion turned on. Everyone wants to be better than someone and it turns to shit eventually. Yeah, for a while. I don't know. I think I think it's possible to sort of outgrow that once you become more comfortable with yourself. It's not easy. It's an age thing. Shit! God damn. Roar. Every time a thought goes into extreme live conviction like this, I'm very cautious of the dangers who comes with groups forming like this. Humans can be very easily brought to do very wrong things out of conviction. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right, yeah. I mean, it's, it starts from a good place, right? It starts from, I would think, I'd hope. There are very few, it seems to me that there are very few people who actively want to do harm. They exist. The assholes of the world that just slam on the brakes for no reason, but most people do bad things because they believe it will result in something good, you know, obviously. And then people differ about how to do that good thing and But it all comes from the motivation of wanting to do good or do right. Protect the kids. Fuck, save the babies. It's just not easy. That's one thing that I've learned too. A little little axiom. The moment someone says it's simple, you can just stop listening to them. Like, complicated shit is never simple. Damn. No. No, I will never. Although I'm spending all my tickets. What's up, Chewbacca? This gun sucks so bad. I'm so bad at it. Need to aim more. So I'm trying to stare at chat too. Not doing myself any favors here. There we go. Oh! Ah! Ooh! a good rule. I feel like I've heard it's simple a lot. I mean, believing that an issue is simple is what allows you to have such an extreme viewpoint. If, if you believe that it's complicated, then all of a sudden you have to start acknowledging that other people might be right about some things, or that they might have perspectives you don't. If you think it's just math, then it gets real easy to, to say that without, without any qualifier, somebody else is wrong. Like, completely wrong. Stupidly wrong. It lets you completely discount other people's experience, lets you... I have figured it out from the safety of my YouTube page that you were wrong. And all I had to do was watch this video. How can you be so stupid 
that you don't see how simple this is because the YouTube video makes it very simple. Some people like simple solutions to problems, and then you're back with bearded white dudes telling you that complicated problems are simple, and that somebody is actually the bad person for manipulating you. Fuck! God, did no! I ran out of ink! <sighs> well, in that spot right before the big loop goes up and around, you're shooting those balloons early? Maybe. I may be misremembering, but this gun, you have, like, the more you charge it up, the more range you get. So it's kind of a complicated thing. Of like, yeah, I, w I would need the time to charge the gun up and then also hit a good shot while also making sure I. Oh, fuck! Ugh! I like when you ask them to explain why they think that way and all they can do is link you to the video they saw in the first place. Riley, yes, that happens a lot. Because they don't even know. They don't even know. They just know the feeling of being right. And they know that the video gave it to them and they think if they show it to you, it'll work. Again, just like religion, man. Can't tell you the number of times, like, I would have complicated questions about religion. I'd ask those questions and then somebody would be like, uh, let's go talk to somebody else. Shit! God. Opinions on the new Tetris effects? I mean, I haven't played it, so I don't have any opinions. It looks really cool. Very much excited to play it. Fuck! Ah. Okay, maybe I can... Whoa! Wow, I thought I was... I thought I was out. Motherfucker! Oh! Fuck! Man! Ugh! God, getting behind is so challenging. What happens if you run out of points? Whatever, I'll find out. I think there's a big difference between understanding a topic and knowing about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a lot of people do is they don't they don't learn about anything, they decide about it. Because a lot of, again, I think it's kind of a young thing, the mark of being educated is having a lot of opinions about stuff. Like, having an opinion about everything. Fucking opinion about everything. But, if you want to achieve maximum smartness, you have to have the most most decisive opinions about as many topics as possible. It doesn't give you a whole lot of time to actually like read about shit. So if you want to be a little smart guy, if smartness is how you judge your character, then you just watch a bunch of YouTube videos from people that hyper-simplify. Or, and this is something that is a particular ambrosia for young men, like math Turn it into math. Take like take the empathy, take the history, take the feeling, take the culture out of an out of a decision. Make it about math. This is wrong because X. This is bullshit because Y. Look at the look at Y. Look at how stupid it is. We're the smart ones. You and me, person who I'm gonna now shove to my Patreon and remind you that for more smart videos like this, you need to give me money. Ooh. What they do is they go on the internet and find out what someone else's opinion is who sounds like they know more than the person watching, then they regurgitate that information and assume it is fact. Yes. Absolutely. I used to do that. Um, at least I at least did it with the news, you know? I'd find a I'd find an op-ed that I really agreed with and be like, "Yes, that is my opinion now." That was also a religion thing, too. Um, same old thing, man. It's just human nature. The news is especially rife with that shit? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's what's gonna happen. That's just... That's just what happens. Yeah! Oh! Thank you. Your office looks like a really nice, bright space. It does right now, Green Man, because it's daytime. But yeah, there's there's a good amount of, uh... Good amount of sunlight in here. Spin your way to the goal. Does this pop all the... Ugh. That's so many balloons. We'll do one more. Oh, look at that! His little thumb moves on the stick. Dee 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 dee. My little sister's friends do that with movies. Their favorite YouTuber hates Black Panther, so now they won't shut up about it. That's annoying, but it happens. Keep dodging until the time runs out. I'll try this one. Yeah, that happens. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That's just that's an annoying thing that people do. So I just can't die, basically. 
Got one life. Alright. Layer 15? Eh. It happens. Okay. 30 seconds without taking any damage. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for that. Hell yeah. Cuddle. Oh, shit. Ooh. Oh, shit! It's especially frustrating when someone actually is educated on topic, but you shut it down by others. Yep, Ernie, that's... Welcome to America. That's... That's been a sort of thing now, and people... People are using the First Amendment and right to free speech as sort of a cloaked way of saying that everyone, everyone's statements and opinions are equal. It's like the death of experts or whatever. Heard that that term thrown around a lot when it came to Brexit. Everyone was like, this is a bad idea. And everyone was so tired of like being told what to think by smart old dudes. And they're like, you know what, fuck you. I'm just going to do what I want right now. Shit. Because this guy on the internet said it was better, so I'm, what if I listen to him instead? Okay, man, okay. Okay. Just a bummer, man. I, I wanted to believe that my life would be a series of direct steps forward? Like, why do we have to go back? Why do we have to... You can go back if you want, man. If you want to, like, not get immunizations and live without electricity and think that the world is flat. You can go do that in a cabin somewhere. Why do you gotta get on the internet and like fucking make a thing about it? Why do you gotta Why do you gotta hold it hold the rest of us back? It's just like being in public Ah shit, man. Yeah, so that that's that's kind of what it goes back to, right though? So it's and this is where people get really confused and they're like, well wait, you said this thing before, right? So it's like, yeah, if I'm saying that it's that subjectivity problem, you know? If you say, like, everything is subjective, therefore nothing is nothing is ever right or wrong, well, fine, if you want to, like, get into the Greek philosophy of it. Sure, there's no there's no truth. We just all live in a perceptual haze, a self- a collected delusion, in which we all agree on what truth and reality is. Therefore, we can shape our reality. Whatever, man. Ugh. Yeah, I did some wiki diving on fucking Plato as well. Um... No. <laughs> this is what the scientific method is for. That was a problem. That was a problem a couple centuries ago, but we figured it out. We figured out a set of rules that get to deliver us to actual truth. And it turns out that that's the sort of thing that really advanced our species. Like, actually really seriously ended a lot of human suffering, thanks to the scientific method. So, there is such a thing as truth. We can't find out what it is. And when somebody uses it to find out what truth is, you're not really allowed to say that they're wrong anymore. Shit. <sighs> this is... I keep getting nicked. Right at the end. Yeah. Splatoon, dog. But I'm now I'm just like, man, I... Maybe it was always happening, and things move forward regardless, but... I was always like, man, I wanted to... I wanted some really cool shit to happen in my life. And that's not gonna happen when people stop fucking getting immunized. Damn it! Seems like you can- I guess you can jump over them when they're low, but then they bounce up? I don't know. I wanted- I wanted the entire nation to run on solar power. And Trump's gotta be all coal now. I'm like, great, good. Now we're four years behind. Whatever could have happened in my life has now been delayed by four years. And if I die before, like, if- if the entire United States switches to solar one year after I die, after I die, it's your fault! It's your fucking fault! I didn't get to see that happen! I'm annoyed. Right, or yeah, you have to send to Cybertopia? I like- I wish to as well. Seems like if you stayed up closer to them, they'd shoot off the sides more often and fall off the platform earlier? Like, up here? It falls, like, right on you, though. I don't- I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think it just falls right on you. Leaving you more space to retreat backwards than necessary, you gotta pay more attention up close? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Maybe. I can try a couple of different things. It's getting pretty close to reversing aging. I've heard that for, for like a couple of decades though. I mean, maybe it's real now, but... Ooh! 
Between, fitting in between them is going to be really challenging. This has been, this is deceptively difficult. I am glad that they put this expansion out. This is just super cool. I would, the single player that was in Splatoon 2 was really good. It always felt like there was a really solid base there for a lot of single player content. Also, man, this has got to be one of the only, only examples I can think of where a multiplayer-focused game's DLC is single-player content. It's not skins. There we go. Splatoon is the only game that knows what kids find cool? I think you cannot say enough about the art design and music and just vibe of Splatoon. It's so, it is, it is very unique. It's super, super cool. You get chat messages. DJ Hyperfresh. Anyway, it's great. Got the cure for cancer already, I'm pretty sure. Regulators or sellers of chemo won't let it out since their product will fail otherwise. I mean, maybe. Sounds like you've been you've been watching some YouTube videos. I'm not going to profess to know what goes on in the medical world. Um, I haven't I haven't researched it, but I have heard some. <sighs> Damn, that's good. Oh, look at your clothes. Look how cute you are. Um. That's why the man keeps it illegal. Yeah. Oh, we can cure everything? That's true. Pissed off my friend by telling him which Splatoon is a post-apocalyptic game? It is. What was it, that Reddit post that was like... Here's how everyone else does the apocalypse. It's all browns and greens and the Nintendos. Bunch of colorful, cute, hip-hop squid people. You don't need time to be gay. Hell yeah, kid. Hell yeah. No, it has been actually really fun to... Like the... The Miiverse stuff in... All Canadians are gay or trans. Okay. Oh my god, is his... Wait. Is his username Loss? It is. Oh my god. There's some there's some hard ass memes, man. I gotta admit, the next generation has a really tight meme game. Pride Month is over. Don't forget to say no homo. All right. Splatoon is the fucking best. Is jellyfish is all passed out. Get to see the spicy memes those edgy fourteen year olds are coming up with. Oh, that's great. Anyway, oh, what you got one? Oh, playing some DDR. Ah, <sighs> all right. I'm gonna go eat breakfast and then go take dance lessons and then go to a barbecue. It's gonna be a pretty sweet day. Oh, oh! May you have a sweet day as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for dealing with my uh, politically charged ramblings. Um, and have a good week. Hopefully, I'll try to fit it in. I'm going to be gone on Thursday, uh, but maybe I can squish them in around there. But yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. I'm Howard Duff. As an actor, I'm deeply interested in drama, and this is possibly one of the most dramatic pieces of land in the world. As a human being and an actor who started out playing prison roles, I'm fascinated with what has transpired in this most famous of penitentiaries. 
So I've tried to learn what has taken place there from the very beginning. It's an extraordinary story. A story of lives hidden away and largely forgotten by society in the name of society. Things happen very fast in Yar's Revenge. The player controls a moving, laser-firing Yar and tries to first blow away a wall of blocks, then blast a creature behind the wall. Miss a few points? Let's back up and look at that first wave in slow motion. This enemy missile is sent out to destroy you at the beginning of each wave or turn. The only place you are safe from this missile is within the stripe. But you can't fire your laser in the stripe zone. So the first thing you should do is head right in front of the wall and begin blasting out a section of blocks to expose this guy here, known as a cotile. Keep on the move to avoid collision with the enemy missile. Once you have carved a large enough hole from the wall, arm your Zorlon cannon, either by biting a block or by running over the cotile. Once the cannon is armed, a colored block will appear on the left side of the screen, and the next time you hit the fire button, this block will take off horizontally. Notice how the block moves up and down with the yar. That's how you aim the cannon. When you see a good shot at the cotile, press the fire button and immediately move yar out of the way. If your shot is successful, you'll see this on the screen. As the effect dies out, you have enough time before the next wave begins to do a little victory dance with your yar. Notice how he wraps around from the top and bottom edges of the screen. The second wave features revolving blocks, and it seems you have to wipe out every block before a shot from the Zorlon cannon would penetrate to the quotile. Not true. Concentrate on one area of the wall and carve out a channel. Now just be patient and avoid collision with the enemy energy missile. channel presents itself in alignment with the cotile, let go a shot, and bingo, one dead cotile. Now and then the cotile turns into a swirl that spins, makes noise, and takes off for Yar at high speed. To dodge the swirl every time, position Yar near the top or bottom and simply duck off screen as the swirl fires. The key to mastering Yar's revenge is by killing a moving swirl, which gains you an extra life. If that's too difficult, Go for the stationary swirls. Arm the Zorlon cannon, position Yar, and nail the swirl as it appears for bonus points. Unless you were asleep all last year, you've undoubtedly heard of or played Defender, the blockbuster Atari cartridge modeled after the popular arcade game by Williams Electronics. Although simpler than the arcade version, by virtue of having fewer buttons to contend with, the challenge of Atari's Defender cartridge is by no means simple. It's more amazing than Reptile Boy found in Swamp. More incredible than Bigfoot Mary's Hollywood star. It's Super Mario All-Stars is free. I want to know how. Just get the Super NES Super Set, and for $3.50 postage and handling, you can send for a free Mario All-Stars game. I did it. Now look at me. Four Marios in one delivered straight to your house by Alien Postman. You'll play every Mario Brothers made. Retouched photos prove it's true. Hurry, pick up your copy today. Super Mario All-Stars is free. You'll love it. Extra!